So I was at this location uh, last year uh, a couple times. Such a beautiful location. But every time I, I think about this location, I think about this song that uh, used to be played by this band that I worked with back in my uh, um, my promoter, sound engineering, webmaster days, all that stuff like that, by this man called Centrifuge, called Cedar Garden. And I'm going to try to find it and drop it somewhere on the soundtrack on this, and I uh, hope you enjoy. Hopefully I don't get a copyright strike. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, let's get out of here. So it's about 3.30 in the afternoon here. Getting here a little bit late. It's okay. I don't have very far to go at all. But, uh, man, I just had to unplug and get off the couch, get off the studio chair, and get out and do something, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I'm going to the, uh, to the Cedar Garden. <laughs> That's good, yeah. It's been uh, nearly a nearly a year since I've been there. Just a quick little overnight. Got to let out a little bit. So it's early November. It's late November, and uh, <laughs> I realized that uh, coming in here. But I've neglected a safety measure. It's hunting season. And uh, your boy isn't sporting any orange. But, uh... There aren't any hunters around here. I got a tree right here. Man, that's a high step. Oh, shit. Blech. Anyway. It's damn good to get out here again. Most of my pack was still packed from Smoky Mountains trips. If you haven't checked out those videos, you will go do that. Yeah, definitely, definitely a fun time there. Okay, let's get on to the Cedar Garden, y'all. All right, see you there. Well, there used to be a couple of obstacles set up on this trail that seemed to be deliberately put in place. But I haven't encountered them. Looks like I'm just walking into my spot. Unencumbered at all. Interesting. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> Try to pack my hammock so that uh, the head side is on the pullout.
backwards. So it's starting to get dark. Uh, I'm pretty much all set up back in there. You know, right behind me. Walking out to the sandbar right now. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful night. Yeah, check out the, got the moon here. Got the moon showing herself. Had a girl. <laughs> Well, I got a little fire here that uh, I think is going to burn down to some nice coals for me to cook on. I'm not uh, going too fancy tonight, uh, but a step above uh, your dehydrated meals and whatnot. I've got uh, some sliced up uh, yellow tomato, yellow ye yellow potato <laughs> with butter. <laughs> messing with you. Yellow potato with butter here, and I got a, I got a German sausage here, gonna, which I haven't figured out, haven't made up my mind how I'm going to try to cook. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I definitely didn't think this through. <laughs> oh, this whole trip's been like that. My pack is goofy. Like last minute. Oh, yeah, that's dead. And, and this is too hot. This is definitely too hot. Uh, okay. I need both hands. So <clears throat> the sausage broke, but it was still raw inside. Uh, but it's cooking. Yeah, I put the I put it on all way too soon. I should have waited until the fire died down the coals. I definitely hold myself to a higher standard when cooking at home. Anyway, we'll see how this does. I'm just using a couple of sticks as a pair of tongs, you know, like this. Well, there we have it. The uh, sausages are done. Potatoes are. Plenty done. I use, uh, I like yellow potatoes. I use those at home too, uh, cause I think they taste really nice and, uh, they cook real fast. And, uh, yeah. So this is my dinner and, uh, with that, uh, I'm signing off for the night. All right. So it was about 8.30 or so and I, I went to bed. And just as soon as I started to doze off, uh, it started to rain. And I did that all night and uh, got up finally at about 7.30. So that's a good 11 hours down. But it was a pleasant night. Yeah. Definitely pleasant night.
after I set up camp last night, I uh, realized I forgot my phone up in my truck, and I, I'm only parked maybe a thousand yards, fifteen hundred yards up the trail. So I went and got my phone, <clears throat> and uh, I'm coming back. It, uh, I must have spooked like two deer or something, because there's definitely two animals crashing through the brush <laughs> about, 100 years, about 50 to 100 yards from me. It's pretty close. Like, they're scared them really good. Didn't see them, but uh, uh, they were moving. Um, there was a little bit of coyote action last night. Uh, a, a small pack some distance away went off about soon as dusk hit. And then about, I don't know, while I was making dinner, I was sometime around that, one lone coyote sounded like he was up there by the uh, by where I by where I parked. Started barking and yapping. And he went nuts for a minute or two. It was one guy, one lone animal. Other than that, very quiet, very uneventful. I didn't hear any uh, gunshots, so uh, you yeah, know, no hunters made a score yesterday. There were a couple of trucks parked on the way in, so I know there's a couple of guys out here or, or girls. Anyway, I'm hungry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this, and then I'll show you around. So, the uh, the most viewed video on my channel is uh, my demonstration and review of the Nada Axe by Bare Bones. Uh, lots of comments there, lots of negative ones. It's been fun, whatever. I've done a couple of videos about that. Uh, very, very capable, very, very capable uh, blade. But uh, my blade fairy, thank you, Kim, uh, sent me this. This is a Nada Hatchet. I used it for the first time last night. Uh, it was too dark for me to film, uh, but uh, I'll just tell you a few, a few things about it. Uh, it's like the Nada, like the Nada Axe. Uh, it's not terribly sharp from the factory, so I'm going to want to clean that up. Um, it's got some good heft to it. It is a really good chopper. It is, it is, a, it is a heavy blade. It is a heavy blade. And what I also like about it is uh, and it was my criticism of the, of the uh, Nada Axe is that the uh, handle. I mean, I can easily get two hands on the handle, and uh, you know, I mean, this is, <laughs> you know, you know, it's, it's even it's even shorter than the uh, uh, than the Nada Axe. It, it doesn't have its more machete-like uh, characteristics. The Nada Axe can be used as a machete as well. Uh, but uh, I mean, it is a chopper. This thing will this thing will go through bone. Okay. Be a pretty bitchin' weapon too, so as uh, not an axle. But anyway, I haven't had a chance to uh, demonstrate that for you, uh, but in the future, I will. I promise. Not a hatchet, by bare bones. Yeah, that not axe became my go-to blade. Uh, I stopped. I don't even use my uh, hardly use my my silky saw anymore. It's my go-to blade. I don't care what the haters say. This is home. Uh, tarp's a little saggy there. I, know, I was a little quick on the setup. This isn't the most ideal conditions for me to, I like to camp in, uh, of course. I wasn't expecting rain, but I didn't check the weather. I just wasn't expecting it, whatever. Uh, at least I got everything underneath last night uh, quickly enough so that things didn't get completely soaked. But anyway, you can see behind me. This big grove full of white cedars and slash pine. Very, very nice. People come here, like I said, it's evident. Uh, I picked up a couple of pieces of trash, but you know, largely people have been pretty good about that. And what they haven't been good about is stuff like this. And what's happened here is that people have, this is white, this is, uh, uh, this is cedar. And that uh, bark is very good. Fire starter. It's 
people tend to hack at these trees. I see that a lot. I've seen it, I've seen it worse in other places. They've tore it up a little bit. This camp is located on a sandbar on a river. So I'll take you to show you that. Big old sandbar. Well, the water's kind of low. We've had kind of less than less than average rainfall last season, so water's kind of low. But uh, you can tell because of those trees that are up on the sand there that uh, the water does get high. And on the other side of the sandbar, the water's about eight feet below the top of the sandbar. So yeah, I was out here uh, last year. I discovered this place uh, by accident. I was out here uh, uh, camping with my friend Danny. And uh, uh, it's kind of a funny story how I found the place. I will uh, put up a card or something like that. A little pop out to direct you to that video. Anyway, nothing keeping me here today. So uh, I got nowhere to go, but Nothing to keep me here, so I might as well just start to start to break down. And because of all the wetness, that means I have to it means I have to break down in the rain underneath the tarp, which is always not fun. Well, that'll do it from the cedar garden. Uh, it's good to be back here. Uh, yeah, left the place all leave no trace. Like you know, I did cut a branch, I did burn some wood, I did dig a hole and poop in it, but uh, yeah. Time to go. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. It was kind of a kind of generic, but uh, hey, I'm doing something. <laughs>